Hello, good evening. I'm going to be at the state dinner. A few technical difficulties, so bear with us. Thank you very much for being patient. But if you have your worship guide, we'll go ahead and take that. I chose 25 percent more on First of all, we have a visitor center. I'm just kidding. See how, yeah, that's how I am on the wall. So I'm not going to read right now. But we do have a visitor center. So go you know, check it out. Um, the 780 schedule, obviously we're here today, very excited to hear what the Mexico Mission team uh, has to report to us tonight about their uh, very fruitful trip back in May. And then also tonight, uh, of course, we start a music and war for children. Music major required for those age four through grade one, and then young musicians grade two through grade five. And then starting next Sunday night, right here, same time, same place, we're going to be starting Counterculture by David Platt. Uh, David Platt is one of our sharp young leaders, uh, not only in our convention, but the entirety of Christendom right now, and uh, just a sharp, genuine, uh, godly man. Uh, and he's actually the uh, president of the International Mission Board uh, as of about six weeks, or excuse me, about six months or so now. And uh, it's a really good study that he's put out about uh, what the Bible says about many of the social issues that we're dealing with in our culture and how we as Christians can address those things. Like same-sex marriage, uh, abortion, um, uh, sex trafficking, many of these major issues that are that are serious, serious issues in not only our uh, society but also the world. And so we're going to be walking through that study starting next Sunday. Um, and also, it's not on your take note, but uh, Sunday the 27th, we're going to start with, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we walked through two weeks during the Bible study hour right in here with Metro In Focus, which what we said was a catalyst, a time to then walk through some actual vision planning, vision casting for the future. So that process is going to be starting very soon with a team of representatives uh, from the church, uh, staff, and also folks that are representing uh, the church as well. And so on the 27th, we will actually kind of walk through what that process is going to look like. We'll do the first half of the 5 o'clock hour. We'll do the counterculture study. The second half, uh, we'll be walking through what that's going to look like for the next several months as we uh, walk through some uh, vision planning for Metropolitan. So you will want to make sure you're here for that Sunday, <coughs> doubly so, not only for counterculture, but also uh, for that, that focus and that report. Um, then, of course, uh, most of you know by now, but uh, uh, if you are part of my midweek Bible study on Wednesday night, we're actually starting to meet in the parlor. Uh, the reason being is because Grozone is starting, had two great uh, weeks already kicking that off. Uh, the children's Wednesday night program actually starts with a large group rally in here. So if you have been thinking about coming to my midweek Bible study, we're actually going to be meeting from here on out in the parlor. And that's been a really nice time to get out and study the Bible, but most importantly, uh, pray, pray for many things, including revival uh, in the church. Nominating committee reports available should be out on the tables, um, and then information there about uh, about when they'll be presented, and then the vote will be next Sunday evening, five o'clock. Okay, so during, so not only counterculture next week, but we'll be voting on the nominating committee report, and then of course, as Josh mentioned, and. Uh, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, very elaborately, as much as we would love to have Matt volunteer in children's ministry, sorry Matt, we just want some others, <laughs> and so we'd love to have you. Um, it's a great problem to have, but yet it's still a problem that we have. Our children's ministry is growing, and our programs, the number of children involved in them are growing, and so we need more volunteers. Great problem to have, yet still something needs to be built. So uh, we'd love to have you as a part of that. Um, guys, how are we doing back there? We good? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to welcome our Mexico Mission team to come and report to us tonight. Lord, we thank you so much for um, their faithfulness to serve in Mexico. God, we thank you that uh, not only for their service specifically in Mexico, but how it makes us think about how we are to be on mission. We're to be on mission, whether it's the four corners of the earth, right around the block, everywhere in between. And God, we thank you for their willingness to go and to serve and give up their time. We thank you for those in our congregation, even those seated here tonight, that were willing to support with prayer and support financially. And God, we thank you most importantly for the work that you're doing. We know anywhere that you've called us, whether it's to our neighbor or whether it is at the ends of the earth, that Lord, you go before us. You've been going before us many years, many decades, even before we go to prepare a way. So we thank you for the way and the work that you've been doing in Mexico. God, we thank you for the fruitfulness of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hi. Yeah. 
the longest we've had to wait between getting back from our mission trip and presenting to you guys the trip, um, which has been really hard because I think at least for many of us, this was probably the most exciting one we've done. And uh, we were itching to talk to you guys right away. And it's like, September? <laughs> um, it was more exciting than getting pulled over by the federales and bribing our way out of the ticket. It was more exciting than losing a wheel bearing in the middle of the desert. Those stories were all interesting. Those weren't exciting in the way that, that this year's trip was exciting. And, uh, you know, Pastor just spoke in his prayer about God working years and even decades in advance. Well, thank you for the lead in, uh, for how I was going to introduce this, because I wanted to give you guys a taste of that. That was one of the cool and exciting things this year. Um, so I'm going to present to you sort of walk through the years um, of our involvement in Mexico and, and how you can see God at work. Uh, see if I can do this and the mic at the same time. Okay, so Atwood, this takes me back to 1999 uh, when I moved on graduating high school in Chicago. And then a couple years later, my parents moved down here to Wichita. And while I was in Chicago, I met my wife, Gary, online. And she shortly thereafter moved up to Chicago to be by me. Uh, this is where I felt the call of the mission field was up in Chicago. I didn't know what to do with it. Started thinking things. Uh, there we go. So we had William and moved to Wichita because we had no family where we were. And it was this time that Carrie made a connection with someone she had grown up with in Branson over Facebook. And she mentioned to him my frustration in not getting anywhere, getting towards the mission field. And he said, well, I'm actually uh, on the mission field right now, me and my wife, um, in a town called Paras in Mexico. Uh, he had fall in love with a young lady whose father had started a children's home. And so he invited us to uh, come down with our family, which at that time was just William, and spend some time there. And so there we go. Green line is Chad moving from Branson. Um, his wife was from Beaumont, Texas, and they were in Powers at the time. And so, we worked at the children's home for a couple of years, and uh, Adam and I sat in Josh Metz's office one day, and we're like, we want to do more. We want to do something different, something new. And do you, do you have any ideas on, on how that might look? Uh, and so Josh just mentioned, you know, my dad knows this guy from Mississippi he, he does something somewhere in Mexico, I, I don't know where. Um, and Adam and I were just looking at each other and stunned silence like, yeah, his name's Armin and he talks a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Josh Metz had moved from Mississippi up to Wichita years earlier. Decades earlier, um, this friend of Josh's dad had gone from Mississippi